Hi guys, it's Bespoke Tom. Today we're going to go through a few of my tips what to look out for when you're buying a suit, aka the gentleman's guide to buying a suit. Today I'm wearing a suit from Tom Ford, wool and mohair mix navy suit. I actually picked this up off of eBay for £600. They're usually around £2,500. It was my size, untailored, so I, uh, I, I grabbed a good bargain and, uh, and got it tailored at Tom Ford. The shirt is from William Hunt, it's me about £150. I got it in the sale, I think, for 100 The tie is a Tom Ford, uh, same thing again. So, um, I think they call this a uh, honeycomb. Something like a honey, honeycomb in the pocket square. This is also a Tom Ford uh, pocket square, which I've just done in a, in a flower, which is how they kind of show you in the store. Gold, gold tie pin. So anyway, so today I'm going to be talking about what to look for when you need to purchase a suit. As you can see, this whole outfit actually cost me less than a thousand pounds. If you were to buy this in the store, it would probably cost you more than three or four thousand pounds. It's very easy to, to buy a suit in a cost effective way, but for it to look like it is bespoke or very high end. So, some of the things that you can do to your suit or, or change about the way you wear your suit to make it look a lot more expensive. The first thing to look out for is the fit of the shoulder. When you're wearing a suit, the first thing that people are going to see is how the suit falls on the shoulder. So ideally, you want a suit that fits much like this one. The shoulder of the suit jacket, it neatly hangs over your shoulder frame. You think of your shoulders that go kind of at a bit of an angle like this, and then they go straight down. You want your suit to kind of mimic this. Different suits will have different shoulders. They'll have more padding here to create a more rigid shoulder, or they'll have, much like this jacket, a relaxed shoulder. It's all based on the fashion. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way to having a, a jacket, how it, how it sits on the shoulder. But the most important thing is here. You don't want this. The shoulder is too big for your suit, and you get this horrible dimple-like effect here. Very, it doesn't look sharp in the slightest. It will ruin the entire aesthetic of your suit. There is no way to get around this if you're wearing a suit. I'm trying to actually make this look like the suit's too small, but I'm struggling. Do not want this. Uh, even if it makes you look muscly in your suit, it looks horrible in terms of your sartorial um, essence. Make sure that the suit fits much like this one. So the shoulders, I mean, I'll be honest, this one could be a slightly bit bigger on the shoulder. See that my shoulder isn't protruding and this gives us a nice base for the silhouette that we're trying to create when we wear a suit. The second thing is the waist. This sharp shoulder line that we're going to create by having a well-fitted suit on the shoulder is going to allow us to nip in the waist and give us this V-shape. Now this V-shape is what creates a powerful figure and when you're wearing a suit it's going to make you feel like a billion bucks. This is my suit. I've had tailored quite a bit. So I have very big shoulders. I'm a very hard a person to suit. I have heavily cut in the waist give me this very slimming figure i mean naturally i am very slim already but when you're wearing a suit the last thing you want is for it to be done up and it to look like this for example for it to be hanging vertically and creating a straight line what you want even when it's undone is a v shape and it's very easy to do because your shoulders will pretty much naturally be wider than your waist but even if they're not and you're a bit tubby by creating this sharp shoulder line as i mentioned in the first step we can really nip in the waist and create a very powerful, strong, authoritative figure just using a simple few tricks when it comes to tailoring. So when you're in the store, ask the person who's working there to pinch the back of your suit, just so you can decide how much you want to taper it in. Mine is fairly relaxed, I work in this suit, so I want a bit of freedom, you know, I can run down the street if I'm late for the train or whatever it may be. Uh, if you're just wearing a suit for fashion, you can nip it in a bit more, it's up to you if you like the creasing that happens because of this. You get these kind of creases. Tom Ford, they're a very big fan of this. They like the very powerful figures. That's something that is a lot more, you know, well fitted and doesn't have any, any creases or kinks. Like I said earlier, this is completely up to you. It's, it's merely a, a fashion, uh, fashion decision. The next topic and probably one of the most important uh, pieces of tailoring that you should do to your suit, especially when you're putting it on training for the first time, is the sleeve length. Now the sleeve length is, in essence, personal preference. I like to show around about an inch and a half, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less um, of, of cuff. When I'm standing, you can see there is a, a little bit of cuff on show, around about a half of an inch. And then when I move my arm up, we get a little bit more on display. And that's when you get the, the cuff link flare. I don't recommend you having so much cuff on display that your jacket feels like this. You know, you've got a great big two inch cuff. Um, I would keep it anywhere between half an inch to an inch and uh, inch and a half uh, when your arm is in fact straight. But like I said, this is entirely a fashion decision, so it's really up to you. 
but it is very important that you have that and you don't have this effect. If you get this tailored, it's quite cheap, very affordable, and they'll shorten the sleeve for you. I tend to have my cuff sitting at the base of my thumb, so around about here. And then my jacket is just a little bit shorter, so usually around where my wrist is. In terms of buttons, your suit will usually come with buttons, you know, uh, stitched on. Sometimes they're working, sometimes they're not. If they're working, that's a sartorial flare, so that they usually shows an expensive suit. So if you have a working button in your cuff, sometimes just undo the first button. Tom Ford have a longer, longer stitching on their first button. Just one of the signs that, that shows that you have a Tom Ford suit. It doesn't matter how many buttons you have, you can have one, two, three, four, five, it, it really doesn't matter. Next we have the arm. Uh, it's very important to have your arms tapered. Now, I have very big arms, I like to train the gym a lot, and my body fluctuates in size. You might opt for, like I have, a slightly looser arm. I need to bend my arms, and I don't have to worry about, you know, if I, if I squeeze my arms, there being any tearing or ripping issues. I can move around, but it still hangs quite nicely. So it's up to you, if you're a bit skinnier, you can really cut these arms in. Depending on where your sh the armhole here is cut, if it's a high cut or a low cut, tapered arm will only increase the illusion of a slim waist. Tapering these arms in, you're increasing the amount of distance between the arm and the side of the waist, which is just gonna make you look slimmer and your shoulders broader. Next we have uh, the finishing of the shoe. Personally, I like to wear a lot of slippers. Um, I actually opt for a, uh, a cuff, as you can see here. I have quite a wide ankle as well. This is a very, uh, very old-fashioned style of suit. Uh, so I like to kind of match the, the trouser with that. But from staying from behind, your suit uh, trouser should fall very, you know, very naturally onto the bottom of the heel. I think it's important to have a small break in your trouser, just a little one. You can, uh, you can have them a bit shorter, perhaps something like this, uh, or even a little bit longer, but please don't have them dragging on the floor. That's gonna look really, really sloppy. That's a few of my really quick tutorial tips, uh, things that you can do to make your suit look better, and also the things you need to look out for when you're trying a suit for the first time in a store, and don't know if it's gonna fit you well once you've had it tailored. In terms of ties, uh, this is a, uh, a shirt with a collar pin. I really like these because they're, they're quite high around the neck. I have a beard and it creates a really sharp contrast to what might be quite a messy kind of facial, facial look. And then something very sharp around the neck immediately smartens up the look. This is a half Windsor and I've got a little tulip here. So what I've done is I've pinched in the middle of the tie as I've, as I've tightened it like this. And this creates a tulip effect. Bringing back a little bit of flair into the way you wear your outfit. The most important thing about wearing a suit is that it's about proportion. It's very important that you match your lapel width with the kind of body shape of your body. So I have a very broad shoulder and a very slim waist. So I've opted for a very, very wide lapel which matches the V of my body. And this only accentuates the V shape of my body and my suit more. If I was to have a very skinny uh, lapel, something like this perhaps, just as an idea, I've got a tremendous amount of space here and it doesn't really match the, the flow of my body. It won't look that great. I have a, a peak lapel here, there's a little peak. I also have a notch lapel of your traditional suit. It's a fashion preference. This is more traditional in, in, in suiting. A not, notch lapel is a bit more modern and that's what te people tend to wear. I said, it really is just up to you. It's your personal preference. I tend to wear mine in a flower. So if you're wearing your shirt, you don't want to have a, a, a regular shirt where the, the edge of the collar doesn't meet the edge of your suit. All times you want the collar to meet the suit. Shirt isn't made for that. This is a little bit short. But I don't, basically I don't want this to happen. This creates a horrible silhouette. It doesn't work with the lines of the body. You want the, the collar to meet the jacket much like this. That's a well-fitting shirt. If you want a shirt, do make sure that it, it matches the suit and that you don't have something like this. As you can already see, it just doesn't look great. It, this horrible triangle going on here. You want this shirt to kind of gracefully continue the lines, the sharp lines of the suit. I hope you've enjoyed this guide. Please drop your comments in the comment section if you have any uh, questions. Head over to the blog, bespoketom.com. I have a full write-up and loads more information about what you should look out for when you're buying your first suit, and also some of the simple alterations you can make to your suit to make it look like it is bespoke or made to measure. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for all of my upcoming guides and tutorials. I'll see you next time.